Okay, officially, let's begin. Welcome, welcome all. So glad you're here for our roadmap for creating a better world and a preview of the silver method, silver life and intuition system. And today preparing for, I was really thinking about it and it's true to really why I'm here that I really want to kind of reframe this title for, the, for our masterclass tonight, Roadmap to Create a Better You which will create or result in a much better world for that. And I'd ask everybody, take a look and make sure you're muted because I'm not seeing everybody, your microphone, just make sure that you're muted so that we don't have any with that. So I say that to you because, as you know, those, so many of you, most of you on the call with me now know me, you've heard stories, you're going to hear some of them again tonight, a repeat, but I'll see if I can add a little twist for you, is that, what really drives me, what has kept me going and passionate about this work since 71, a long time, I'm going my 51st year this Memorial Day weekend, is really you, is you and me together as a community, you and I and the silver community, and the growing number of people, we'll call them light workers, we'll call them more enlightened people, we're all in this together. and. I not only believe, but I know in what I've observed that as you and I each become just a little bit better, a little bit happier, a little bit more loving, a little bit more generous, a little kinder, a little more respectful, but we could use a lot of that. We're easier to live with, agreed? Can you see that? We're easier to work with. I'm not pointing any fingers, but you know who you are. <laughs> We're easier, uh, we do a better job, we show up, our best self emerges. We thrive. So if we're truly going to create a better world, it really begins with you and I. And I don't claim to be the know-it-all, and I don't claim to have all the answers. I'm far from it. I wish I did, because there's a hot mess in the world today. But I do know that as I go back over these past five decades, the world has made a lot of shifts for the better. And some of you who go way back remember when we were like the only game in town, everyone was like this about silver mind control. And now meditation has become mainstream. Now a lot of these practices have become mainstream and we hear people come to the woodwork. So I would like to read something to you to set a tone for, for tonight. Because one of the things I want to explore, and I want to make this as much as possible a masterclass, a workshop, and make it, make it um, experiential for you rather than just listening to me. Obviously, I only have 90 minutes. I can't barely touch what we cover in four full days. I always laugh marketing people and say, well, you have 12 days of training. And it's 12 one-hour videos spread out over 12 days. <laughs> I read something came in the mail from a colleague. I said, well, there's equivalent of three days. And they're offering two four-hour sessions and then one video for that. So those of you know what I'm referring to uh, with that. It's not a quick fix. It truly isn't. It's not easy. It's outright challenging. But when you have the skills that we're going to look at tonight, and when you use these skills, it does get easier. And you do navigate life, which is what we want, with more grace, more ease, and a greater sense of flow with your intuition. So may I just read this to you? I, I thought it was so well written. I was reading um, part of the team that works with me in technology and marketing and, and, and branding and stuff sent this to me. And it reads something like this. Dramatic events wire and rewire our lives. We know that. Whenever there's anything dramatic in our lives, positive or negative. So remember the pain management technique, love anesthesia? <laughs> Can you remember when you first learned it? It was like, yeah, I don't know about that. But in an emergency, it works every time. Because automatically, when we are traumatized, or there's a dramatic event, there's a lot of emotion. The, sh the shields drop, so to speak, and we're much more vulnerable. These dramatic events help to shape who we are and what we become. So for example, COVID-19 pandemic has been doing that too. It's been a stress test for everyone over these past, over two years now. A soul shaping moment that underscores the need for resilience, agility, and human connection. And please, I don't mean to minimize it, 
I feel so fortunate and so blessed that for myself and my family and so many silver grads I know, uh, we're okay. We're in really good shape and, and, you know, and, and life is, is, is good. And yet too many people are really suffering. And right now in the world, there are horrific things going on. You know that all around the world and been for some time. So I don't mean to minimize that, but it just goes to show you how much work we have to do together. So the physical, mental, and spiritual effects of the coronavirus pandemic have been profound. Duh, right? In our latest global foresight survey, so they did a survey, we found out that the future ain't what it used to be. 37% of the respondents say the pandemic spurred them to reevaluate their purpose and priorities in life. Can you relate? I mean, Pete, you're on a show of hands. I'm not able to see all of you, but just so that you, it'll help you stay awake, by the way. Or if you want to do the famous yes, can, no, can, or do that for maybe. Really, I'm, I, you know, especially when you're doing it virtually, be as present as you can. Turn off your emails and, and texting and stuff like that. So I know you know that. And if we could say one of the blessings out of this horrible situation we're all been living through is that people are reevaluating their lives. And so many social injustices have come to the forefront and have been like smacking us in the face. Would you agree? I mean, it's not fun. It's painful. It's painful to recognize, you know, because we're all in this together and sitting back silently doesn't excuse us. And even though we haven't done that directly, a lot of stuff. And I think ultimately that's a good thing if we start addressing it. And if we truly start managing that, that's the challenge, isn't it? While 41% said that if they had a do-over, you know, what, what they call a mulligan, they choose a different career. And 65% now expect more out of work and life. So for example, uh, again, I'm very fortunate. I was 19 years old when I started in 1971. Uh, I was a thought I was going to be an engineer, then I thought I was going to become an accountant, whatever. But when I first started in this, I was just so enthralled with it, so passionate that I'd, I'd, I'd do it for free. And, and in many ways, in my early days, I did do it for free because I made a lot of mistakes and I wasn't really much of a business person. And, you know, and you have to have that balance, as you know, with that. But can you see that if all we're doing is chasing the money, I just had a conversation with somebody, a short conversation that really raised my alarms, concern. People who are chasing the money, and I understand we all want to thrive, we have families, we want to do the best for our families, agreed? Or maybe our grandchildren. But if we're just chasing the money, it's going to be hard to navigate the predictable challenges that every industry has. And then what happens to people is they get upset easily, they're less tolerant, and they become impulsive, and they're changing. And do you know anybody like that? Where they go from one career to another career to another job, and it's the same complaints each and every time. So I hope I don't sound like I'm proselytizing or whatever, but I can say this. What we need more of is a focus on contribution. So I would ask you to start reflecting on some of your goals and what is the unique contribution that you want to offer to the world? Whether you're a bus driver, a social worker, a mom, a dad, a, a grandparent, a salesperson, a doctor, a nurse, it really doesn't matter what we do. We all are in this civilization together, this community together, and, and we all make a difference. So, Ken, I'm with you. I understand. I, I hear that. But with this hot mess that's going on now, what, what can we do to protect ourselves? Agreed? So I want to go through and four skills that you'll want to have personally, in my opinion, I think they're necessary skills. And it almost doesn't matter how you develop these skills. I'm in love with the silver method. I think it's the best game in town. I haven't, I've been through them all. I've been certified. I've been investigating. And I guess I really found my calling, if you will. And many of you on the call have been inspiring me what you're doing and how you've turned your life around and how you're healing and, and, and so on and so forth. That, that's just so cool. 
So let's take a look at skill number one. And after each skill, the four skills, we'll do a little short exercise. A little, you, and you'll see what I mean. And it's the kind of thing that you can take with you. These are takeaways, so stay to the end. Watch this to the end. Focus. Get the most out of it that you can. Take some notes, but maybe take minimal notes. So the first one, you can probably guess, has a lot to do with our energy. And the importance of managing our energy, leveraging our energy to work with it. So I'm just going to ask you questions, and you know, I wish we were in the room together. And, and they might be obvious questions, and some of what I'm going to share with you may even seem like common sense. But just because it's common sense doesn't mean it's common practice. Agreed? So many of you are silver grads trained. Some of you are not. Some of you only read the book or you've had the home study. So part of my intention is to not just remind you, but to spur you on and inspire you because it's your daily consistent application that will make the difference. There's nothing I can say or anybody can say that will make a difference other than to feel good temporarily. So that's why I want to do these little short takeaways. So let's look at skill number one, managing your energy for that. So again, I want you to kind of play along with me. Please think in your life. Think in your life what this means you know, for you in, in your life. When you're fatigued, running out of steam in the middle of the day, doesn't matter what time it is, two, three, midday, are you at your best? Yes or no? Give me a no or yes. Oh, how can we possibly be at our best? If you're running out of steam and you have no energy, do you feel like doing anything more? So maybe you had these big plans. You were going to get together with some friends tonight and have a nice meal. Oh, and you would call them and say, I, I can't make it. I'm exhausted. I'm just so tired. How many of you can relate to that or know people like that? They're always tired. I'm not making fun of it because there are reasons. So what I'm leading up to is, is yes, we need a good quality sleep. All the research shows we need a minimum of seven to nine hours of sleep each and every night. I know for those of us who are high performers and really productive, guaranteed you can hold me to this when you consistently get a minimum of seven to nine hours each and every night, even on your day off, you will get more done in less time. You'll think more clearly because no matter who you are, even if you meditate regularly, consistently, and you have a massage every day, the, body, the world we live in has all sorts of triggers to the stress response. Oh my God, just putting on the news for 30 seconds is a challenge. Would you agree if you put it on lately? I don't know about you, but I can't take it. I mean, I do look because I want to be informed, but there's a lot or, or the papers. So the cortisol levels increase, the stress hormones increase, and they become toxic. And it's the little things that build up that we kind of ignore and we repress and we think, you know, it'll go away. And then we find ourselves feeling fatigue prematurely. It contributes to sleepless nights, trouble getting to sleep, stop, trouble staying asleep. Can you relate? It contributes to headaches. It contributes to aches and pains. Do you know there's so many of the aches and pains that we all experience? It's not just because of our age. There are a number of people on the call who are close to my age. I turned 70 in October. Well, that, this, yeah, as we age, the body may not be as resilient. The brain may not be, possibly. And there are changes, absolutely. But to, that, that's a, really, it's a myth. It's a big myth that's been proven scientifically that it's not just our genes or the aging. Stress is really the enemy. And the biggest contributor to stress would be what? Fear. What if? Agreed? So just think for a moment. When you're, when you're feeling overwhelmed, that leads to feeling overwhelmed, that sign of that is, and you start feeling helpless and hopeless, it's almost impossible to feel peaceful, to feel joy. It's almost impossible to be at our best. 
and then we come home to dinner, be with our family, and instead of being present with our children, present with our family, our loved ones, and enjoying their company, we're preoccupied, we're, you know, zoned out. Can you relate? Again, just be honest with yourself. If you're a practitioner, then it may not be so much of a problem. But share this with people. I'm going to teach you things tonight that are easy to pass on to others because it happens. And then we have this big list of everything we're going to do tonight, and it doesn't get done. It's a leading cause of illness today. It's a leading cause of depression today. It's a leading cause of aches and pains. And I'm not making this up. In fact, we've been teaching this since 1966. I, wish, I always say I wish Jose Silva was still alive. It is a joy for me and a blessing and an honor to have started with an original thinker. I believe and follow original thinkers, not watered down copies, not watered down, you know, or imitations of the real deal. This man was a visionary and he was ahead. And so much of what he was criticized for has been documented. So this first one about managing energy is yes, about creating a state of being of joy, of calm, of be feeling at ease. Some would say an, an abundant, a state of abundance, and not necessarily money-wise, but abundance of energy, abundance of good joy, being in flow with your intuition. If we go into, if we become overloaded with stress, we go into scarcity consciousness. The back, the brain takes over, fear mode takes over. And when that happens, it interferes with the higher thinking functions of the brain, and it's hard to concentrate. It blocks intuition, intuitive insights. We become more impulsive and reactionary. And instead of responding and looking at, okay, what's my best move? We react and sometimes wish we hadn't done what we did. Can you relate? I mean, I could go on and I, and I won't, but it's this, I think all four of the skills are important and are necessary together. However, by itself, this one skill could save your life. Because if we're overwhelmed and stress levels become toxic, it'll compromise your immune system. And no matter what's going on on the planet, health-wise, whatever the dangers or the risks that we're being warned about, the one thing I can tell you, anything and everything that you can do that you know for fact will boost your immune system, and meditation is one of them, controlled relaxation, focused attention, will help you to live longer and have a better quality of life. And again, I can say that so easily now because there's co constant research coming out about that. So let's take a look at some things to do here. Um, I want Some of this I'm gonna have to repeat for that. We wanna build some, some competencies. So if we look at what's been going on during the pandemic, a lot of the fear and the worry and the what ifs, would you agree worry is, is an enemy to our body, to our health and our well-being? Can you see that? Because worry is like fear. It's fear-based. It's a false event appearing real. It's a misuse of our imagination. Now, why is this important? Fact, we know that the brain in these inner conscious levels, which are very much a part of us all during the day, not just when we're sleeping or meditating or daydreaming, it does not distinguish between what we vividly imagine and what we actually experience. And when we're in a state of anxiety, when we're in a hypervigilant state, that's the drama, that's the high intensity, the energy. And then we start worrying, oh my God. You know, it's like people, you're walking in the street and they go, you know, like a mile away across on the other side. I'm exaggerating, it's not a mile because of the fear. And meanwhile, you might be perfectly healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. The fear does more damage. And I've heard leading epigeneticists tell us that fear is doing more damage because it puts the body in a hypervigilant state and it floods the body with stress hormones which compromise the immune system. So number one, as a competency, part of the skill is we've got to manage to have more energy and vitality and joy and balance. We need to manage worry. Agreed? Come on, everybody, give me, I'm going to take a quick peek through. I want to see some nodding heads. Thank you, Marika. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> and Sandra. Sandra, you always have such a great smile. Thank you. So quick, quick reminder. 
again, this is going out to both silver graduates and so my intention is to serve you graduates to inspire you to practice what you know and what you've spent a lot of time developing. And for those of you who are new to silver, to give you some insight so you can see what this is about. So remember mental house cleaning. It's a pattern interrupter. Some of us have patterns of excessive worry. Any of you? I used to be, I admit, I used to be CEO of the club, Warriors Anonymous. If there was such a club, I'm serious. It's why I was flunking out of school. I went to, I, I was taking college level advanced training, chemistry, calculus, science, B plus average, in a private school in Brooklyn, New York with Severian brothers. I went to engineering in BU. And BU is not known for engineering, the classes are small. And the harder I tried, the worse it got. And those of you who know my story, I, I'm flunking out. And the more I asked for help and the more I studied, the worse it got. After one full year academic probation, and then another two weeks my second year, I, I, mean, I couldn't take it. I'm no quitter. Those of you who know me, I'm very kind of persistently stubborn. But it was, it was horrible. I, I mean, it was just it's like my worst nightmare. So I switched to a much, much easier curriculum in business administration. And my grade point average went from D minus with some Fs to about a D plus. So obviously something was wrong with who? Not the school that teaches, but me. So the takeaway for you is I was in worry mode constantly. I was so concerned, you know, this is it. This is the beginning of my life. I gotta get a good education. I gotta get a good job. And when I pass and, and all that pressure, I succumbed to it. I, I, I freaked out. I psyched out. I was my own worst enemy. Can you relate? And when I took this training, Memorial Day weekend after two years, and I started practicing, the first thing I had to do was overcome some anger issues. I was getting headaches all the time. I was able to control the headaches without drugs. And a few months later, went back to school and I had to interrupt the pattern of worrying. So in psychology, it's called the pattern interrupter. And in silver, we call it mental house cleaning. Cancel, cancel. Everybody say it out loud. Cancel, cancel. For those of you who knew if this is your first time hearing this, it sounds so weird. Say it. Cancel, 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 cancel. Yeah, I agree. It sounds ridiculous. That's why it works. Because it's so absurd. It's so like a big red flag. It's like a kick in your butt saying, hey, 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 Sarah, you're worrying. Then you've got to reframe it. Okay, I'll figure this out somehow, some way. I'll get there. I'm making an effort. I, you got this. Whatever, however you talk to yourself, you got to manage your inner dialogue and manage that crazy dictator inside that is really prone to negativity. And by the way, it's not some, I'm going to say it's not even your fault. It's the way we're wired. Biologically and neurologically, we are wired to look for problems, for survival and safety, security. It's the number one, number two, it's what we're all about. If we're unconscious to that, so we need self-awareness, become more conscious to that, then we can recognize it and manage that energy so that we're still gonna feel it, the concern, but it doesn't become overwhelming. It doesn't debilitate us. If you've ever been in worry mode, it can debilitate you from making a decision. It's like, oh, what should I do? So the cancel, cancel, if you have a negative worrisome thought, I want you to start using that right here, right now, even tonight. If you start saying, I don't know if I could do this, cancel, cancel. I'll learn. I'll get there. And be honest. You don't have to say, I got it, because maybe you don't yet. So make it more believable. I'll get there. I'll figure this out. Second step with this is managing the worry mode and then also managing complaining. If you become overly critical, if we explore the higher thinking functions of the brain. If we explore our normal waking state, what we call beta, those of you who don't know, Mr. Silva spent 22 years studying brain science. At the time, it was biofeedback, hypnosis, meditation, what's become known as positive psychology, wisdom schools, ancient teachings, metaphysical teachings, looking for common denominators. And here in this inner conscious, so-called subconscious state where the brain doesn't distinguish between what we vividly imagine and what we actually experience. This is the game changer, learning how to manage our energy there and not, so if we're in overly critical or chronic complaint mode, 
that will interfere and it causes the release of more stress. So again, I want to ask you questions. Think about it. Have you ever been in um, complaint mode? Or maybe not you, not you, of course, not you, but do you know anybody who's ever, who's a chronic complainer? No matter what you do, it's never enough. Come on, put your hands up high. I'm looking at some of you. Thanks, Jeff. Of course we do. Of course. And is it fun to be with somebody when they're complaining like that? So my friends, more importantly, this is about you. If you want to create a better life for yourself and sustain it and navigate the crap that's going on and maybe even contribute to at least a betterment for your family, your community, the world at large, you know, as, if, as we look at the global community, this is a step because when we're in chronic complaint mode, it blocks intuition and it interferes with the higher thinking functions because it basically blocks the amount of blood and oxygen to the brain. So the cancel, cancel, big, huge. But two more things, and we'll go, go into to, excuse me, an exercise. And one would be um, relaxed, focused state, what in the silver method we call dynamic meditation. So may I say this, if you know any meditative technique, fantastic, use it. It's one of the best things, best investments you could make for you in your life. What Mr. Silva found was that once we're in a meditative state, relaxed and quiet, that we can focus our thoughts. We can have a relaxed focus of attention. And we can employ then creative visualization. We can manage our inner dialogue and still sustain this inner, quiet, relaxed state. And way back, he was one of the first, if not the first, to actually suggest that. Because even the leaders and Maharishi himself, at first, was very critical of that, saying you would lose it. So it's a relaxed, focused state. And why is that important? Because whatever you give attention to, you give energy to. Whatever you give energy to will grow and multiply. It's one of those principles that we build on all throughout the four days. In the four days, in day one, we spend so much time helping you sleep better at night, helping you to get into quiet, relaxed state quickly and easily, helping you to release all the stress in your body, helping you to eliminate pain help and manage it, helping you to eliminate headaches, all without the need of drugs. So there's no side effects, there's no risk for that, and it's a lot cheaper than your co-pays, which helps us kind of get the, the, the body into balance. So a couple of tips, and we do this exercise, most common question that I even still hear sometimes from silver practitioners is, Ken, my mind's all over the place, wandering. So one of the myths of meditation that people somehow have built up is they think they're going to stop thinking. <laughs> Nobody stops thinking. And actually, in, the recent, in just the recent past five months, and in the recent past five years, there have been a number of university evidence-based studies in neuroscience reminding us how very, very important and healthy it is to daydream. Daydreaming, this mind wandering, is releases, plugs us into our intuition, innovative ideas, solutions, you know, like when we least expect it. Now, if we're doing that while we're driving and all the time and we don't get anything done. Of course, that's not what they're talking about. But during the day, and one of the things I want to recommend is all throughout your day to spend 30 seconds to a few minutes, two, three minutes, giving yourself a relaxed, focused attention and daydreaming, possibilities, what you want in your life, what's important to you. And when you do that, it helps reset the brain, it helps reset the body, and you're more likely to also get ideas and insights. So one is, eyelids closed. Be aware it goes with the territory. With practice, you can learn to direct and focus the daydreaming. While in a relaxed, quiet state meditation, you don't go deaf. So if there's noise around you, it's another complaint to hear from people, oh, but I could hear my wife in the other room, you know, banging the pots, she was cleaning. Well, okay, life. 
life is imperfect and you live with people, you work with people, you know, those of us who live in cities, even here in a rural community, occasionally there's a siren or there's noise outside. Where I live, often it's the woodpecker on the side of the house, <laughs> which you do want to hear and go out and chase it, but you don't go deaf. So we've got to have a, a, a be more self-aware and understand what we're looking to do is not control people, not to control the environment, but to learn to blend in it. That's part of resilience. So the reason why I read this piece to you is that many of us are redefining our lives. We're starting new, we're reinventing ourselves, we're pivoting, and that's gonna take skills. And this is one so urgently important. So in this exercise, I'm gonna guide you through, just beginning, simple. You as a silver practitioner can certainly use your three to one method. I'm not gonna mention it as a courtesy to people who have not been through the training, because again, we spend four days, full days from nine in the morning to seven at night practicing. 60% of our time in the class is spent practicing. So by the time we finish, people have a noticeable improvement in how they feel. Pain is left, they're more at ease. They feel like a burden has been lifted from their shoulders. Just recently I posted, one of the guys went to his doctor and his, what do you call it, the kidney. He's got kidney difficulty, challenge, I'll put it that way. And the numbers are better than they've been. And much to the doctor's surprise and, and, and amazement. Again, when you take care of your body. Also, while you're sitting in a quiet, relaxed state, it's okay to move, but it is best to be still. It is best not to be chewing gum, not to be sucking on a lozenger, not to be sipping water unless you really need it. It's best to be still, but you know, life is what it is. Be comfortable if you have to adjust or readjust yourself. These are the most common myths. So when you practice, and 15 minutes a day, once a day would be ideal. But I'm gonna tell you, if you do it just for a few minutes, several times throughout the day, that in itself will have a compounding effect. So I'm gonna ask you in a moment, allow your eyelids to close. We'll allow some slow, deep breaths, common practice, we all know that. Breathing, they call, if you look at the word breathe, breathe it comes from the Greek and the root meaning breath of life has to do with life and energy. And it also helps to release a lot of the neuropeptides that help us to feel good in the body. And then I'm gonna ask you to do a little heart coherence work. Although there's not necessarily formally a part of the silver method, it's a good way to, in, to add this into your practice. Just feel some appreciation, gratitude for anyone, anything in your life. For like 10 to 30 seconds, you don't have to spend a lot of time doing that. That, the research shows, helps us to create a balance, a connection, if you will, from our brain to our heart and to our gut, which helps us to be more likely at our best. And then when in that state, we'll do a little controlled daydreaming, and I'll ask you to just kind of fantasize, if you will, or imagine some possibilities, what you'd like tomorrow to be like, next month, next year, as we move through this. What are some of the goals or aspirations? Just kind of keep it simple for now, but just something, maybe um, even just imagine, visualize you have a great night's sleep tonight. Tomorrow will be one of your best days. You'll wake up feeling energized and imagine that. I'll come back to you a little bit. So let's do that. And then there's a second part of this that we want to, that, that, um, we want to do. So, so shall we do it? Sandra, yes. Okay. Jeff? Guillermo, is that you, buddy? On your iPhone. <laughs> I, I really enjoy shouting out to you guys and acknowledging you because you grace me with your presence. I want to grace you with, you honor me with your presence. So in this, real simple, I'm also going to put on a sound that we use in the silver class. It's called the mind-directed sound. And it's something that's very unique to the silver method although we are the most copied, most imitated program on this planet, Mr. Silva spent 22 years perfecting this. It's two sounds, it's metronome sound. Have you had a metronome studying music like piano lessons and they time it and then there's an electronic version. It's a neutral sound. So music can be used very skillfully and yet people relate to it differently. So it's a very neutral sound, it's repetitive, it's monotonous. <laughs> 
And why is that important? When it's repetitive and monotonous, it naturally, you're working with nature, causes our brain to relax. It causes us to get a little sleepy. It's tensions not to make us bored, but it does kind of lend to that. So I'll just have it very quietly in the background. So just real short, we'll do several short. And this is the kind of thing, my friends, that I'd like you to do every day, several times during the day. So just very short and sweet. So if you would, fasten your seatbelt, loosen anything you'd like to loosen, be as comfortable. You can go in any position you like. However, usually it's best to sit up so you stay more conscious. The idea of this is to get as deeply relaxed and stay awake and stay conscious. Worst thing that happens is you get a good siesta. All right, so let me just put this on very quietly. And Tony and Mary, I'm just going to say, would you give me a... I just find it very, very soft in the background. Can you give me a thumbs up? Is it soft or is it kind of loud? Let me just move one thing. How's that? Can you still hear it? Thanks, bud. Okay, so please allow your eyelids to close. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through this. And now with, and some of you are, are, are not on video, and if you happen to be driving and you're just listening, you've called in, that's great. Please do not do this, obviously, while you're driving. Please just kind of ignore. <laughs> now with your eyelids closed, allow a very slow, deep breath. Take your time, inhaling very, very slowly filling your belly, and imagine you're breathing in peace and energy. Hold it briefly, and then exhale out your mouth. Keep exhaling, just release. And imagine you're releasing some of the tension, some of the stressors, stressors that have built up during the day. Excellent. Now allow another very slow, deep breath. That's it, very good, excellent. Hold it briefly. Now as you exhale, release any tensions, release any, just imagine your body getting back into balance, your brain, your mind. Keep exhale, just let it go. One more very slow, deep breath. Breathe in peace, hold it briefly. Now while exhaling, just desire to center yourself, to balance your energy physically, mentally, spiritually. How good it feels to progressively relax deeper and deeper. It's a wonderful, healthy state of mind and body. Excellent. Now while in this quiet, relaxed state, allow yourself to feel some gratitude for anyone or anything in your life that you're happy is in your life. It could be as simple as somebody was kind to you earlier today. A nice smile. It could be you received a phone call from somebody you've been thinking about and they were checking in on you. Whatever it is, just allow yourself to feel some Appreciation, and I'll be quiet for a few moments while you do this. <sighs> Excellent. Now, while you're in this quiet, relaxed state, Let's practice some focused attention, focused daydreaming, and imagine and or visualize you in your life, some positive possibilities. What would your life be like as your best self emerges in all that you do? What will you be able to do? What will you see and experience as a result of your best self emerging and how does it make you feel do this now
you can also note, imagine, to visualize that when you open your eyelids, you're going to feel awake and alert better than before. You will continue to enjoy superior concentration, superior understanding. And this is so. Now in a moment, I will count very slowly so that you gradually bring yourself back to your normal waking state. I will count from one to five. One, two, Coming out slowly now, three, at the count of five, may open your eyelids, be awake, be alert, feeling much better than before, four, five, eyelids open, wide awake and alert, feeling fine and in excellent health, feeling better than before. Woohoo! welcome back, you genius, you. <laughs> Let me just take a look, make sure of the people I can see. Oh, nice smiles, shocks, what a beautiful smile. Woohoo! So tell me, it was short and sweet. I didn't time it, but it was five minutes or less. Did you feel yourself? Do you feel yourself a little bit more awake? Hands up high. You feel a little bit more balanced? You know, tell the truth. If not, that's okay. Take some practice. But can you imagine? I tell you, my friends, when you practice this on a daily basis, it's the game changer. So as much as I'd love to see you in class with me, what good is it to take a training if you don't use it, right? And work with it. And that's the key. So just this simple little practice. I was just doing uh, studying with the neuroscience researcher I study with, who works with Dr. Andrew Newberg, you know the name, Mark Waldman, I bring him up a lot. And he was sharing some exciting new research saying that even just a few minutes helps the brain to reset itself. So here's another bonus takeaway for you. Bonus takeaway, it's not officially part of the silver method. So this is a preview of silver, but also it's a roadmap. So I want to give you as much as I can tonight and help. So, and it's going to sound odd. If you're not familiar with this, it'll, when I first heard it, I said, really, come on. Have you ever been in a meeting and you're talking? And somebody yawns. And say, so, oh, God, I guess I'm boring them. But you know, that might be true. But chances are, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the body's need, the brain's need to reset itself. So after thousands, and I'm talking over 15,000 brain scans that Dr. Andrew Newberg did when he was at University of Pennsylvania, and there's more research coming out. This is part of a, a training called NeuroCoach, which is brand new, very few, if anybody's teaching on the planet, and Mark Robert Waldman, who happens to be a friend, friendly with, and I turn to as my trusted authority in the evidence-based work. Yawning is like a thermal regulator for the brain, and it's necessary. So my friends, during the day, when you go from one test to another, if you were to just even if you don't have to yawn and just push it. So what I want you to do is stretch a little, watch me first and we'll do it. Just a little stretch. Everybody, come on, do it. Let me see you do it. Everybody, come on, Dennis. So people, if there are people around you in your home and say, oh God, this guy must be really exciting, he's boring. Another one. And one more. Make noise. Oh, all right, Vicky, yes. And it serves as a reset. I'm not talking, I, those of you who know me, I have sustained this practice because I'm a straight shooter. I don't exaggerate. I don't give false promises. I only teach. And even, unfortunately, some silver instructors exaggerate. <clears throat> Sometimes, as training director, I hope to help correct that. I would only share with you what I know works, what you can take to the bank, so to speak. So during the day, you may not, it may not be convenient to close your eyelids. Even while you are driving, you can yawn, keep your eyes focused for that. During the day throughout, and notice the difference and how you feel, it's like releasing. And as you get practice, very good, Tony, keep it up, buddy. <sighs> that one, so it's another skill. So you've got the eyes closed, Short three to five minutes relaxation, focusing with a slow, deep breathing. Yawning, you're going to use cancel, cancel to control worrying. We want to praise more, appreciate more, feel gratitude more, and less complaining. 
I know we have a lot to complain about. I agree. I hear you. But come on, does it solve anything? Because when we go into complaint mode, we feel like crap. So you got to really manage that. These are competencies that are necessary. Write this down too. During the day, I just want you to arm yourself. Take care of yourself. Walking. Is anybody, as long as you don't have a loss of use of your legs and so on. But walking is a natural antidote to stress. Some of my, they're called walking meditation. Some of my best insights have been while I'm going on my daily walk. I walk every day, 30 to 40 minutes, three days a week. It's briskly. And I do 30 push-ups. My son does 200 a day. I do 30. But he's a crossfitter and he's like this. And at one point I felt like I'm going to get like that too. And then when I came to understand even more what I'd have to do and the time it would take, <laughs> There are more important things for me to do. I don't want it that much, but I do want to be in good shape. Dancing, dancing. Even if you have to dance by yourself, I confess, how many of you would do this? You put the music on, no one's around in the house, and you just dance up a storm. And you just, all right, yes, thank you, some fellow dancers. Or in, in the mirror, it's a, a great way to release and put on your favorite music. It changes the mood. Nature, being in nature, there's so much research. The Japanese have had this for as part of their practice, where they they call it um some of mind the name, but walking in the woods, there's a term for it. It's part of a meditative practice. But if you live in a city, many of you do live in this in this city, can you find a park? Even where I grew up in Brooklyn, we had parks, we had areas where there were. It's healthy for us. There's something that helps the body reset. The brain connecting like that whenever you can playfulness like a child if you want to activate your intuition be playful be playful uh, those of you who know again forgive me i hope i don't sound like a cuckoo grandparent but my children are 40 38 could be 39 and 30 and they're grown-ass adults but we have three little ones and when they're around, I give them all the attention. I play, I take time off. I set up my schedule so that when they're going to be here, I can be with them fully. Wow. And I get more ideas while I'm playing with them, more insights, more innovative ideas. So be playful. Find a way to do that. Have a conversation with a close friend. These are ways, proven ways, that we can manage our energy so that we navigate life with more grace, ease, and calm, and stay centered. What I'm talking about is we want to be responsive to what's going on, not avoid the problems, not ignore them, but respond and figure out what we can do, plan, rather than react, because when we react, we get into trouble. And usually when we react, it doesn't solve a problem. It may make, make things worse. So second step, second skill, we got to you know, move on here. This one is biggie, number one. Number one, admittedly, this is huge. You got to have this as a baseline. It's a back to basics. I don't care who you study with, who the big names are that get thousands of people in their events. If you don't have this as a baseline to build on, good luck. Because this is what you learn, how you learn. It's learning how to learn. And Silver Method is known for learning how to learn. I have, by the way, my story is not unique. I have not met a student alive who hasn't had a similar experience to me going from flunking to straight A's. By the way, I graduated cum laude and I was a full-time instructor and I was studying less by using what I learned in silver because you're gonna learn how to learn faster. And if you're pivoting, you're relearning, you're reinventing yourself, you wanna be able to learn faster and easier. And you'll have those tools, something we teach in day two called the three fingers technique. The second step though, let's face it, equally important that we build on this foundation is you got to know what you want, right? You got to have clarity of intention, clarity of purpose. Because sometimes, have you ever felt like there's a part of you that wants to go this direction, there's a part of you that wants to go that direction, and or we feel this conflict of interest? So it's important that you have a meaningful intention and that you're clear about what your goals are, your aspirations. What, what what's what's going to contribute to you having a more meaningful more fulfilling life be careful not to get seduced with all the new shiny the shiny objects and the distractions i see people going from one training to another from one certification to another and i ask them why you cannot possibly absorb everything the key is to integrate it so when you're clear about what you want 
and you know what's important to you, and when your goals are in alignment, key alignment with your values. So the point of what I read to you earlier was during this horrible time, during this pandemic that we've all been living through, and it's still kind of dragging it out a little bit, it really gave all of us pause. And many of us began to feel a loss of not being with the people we care about, not being able to hug the people we want to see. I've heard from countless people how their mom, who's elderly, was so concerned, so in fear, she wouldn't let anybody come to see, even though her children were healthy and had been, you know, took all the protections and were going to wear masks and the whole bit. Because in that, it's a lonely place to be and it's not healthy, you know, for us. So by meaningful intention is you we want to work on striving on what's important to us. So If you knew, cancel this thought, but if you knew you only had six months left to live for whatever the reason, and you were convinced, what was the first thing you would do? What was some of the first people you would contact or first things you would do? What would be, you know, remember the bucket list? Remember the movie with the bucket list? That helps. It really helps when you're in this quiet, relaxed state to reflect on your values and ask you, and let your intuition guide you. Who's most important in my life? What's most important? When we're clear about that, we have more focused attention. Whatever you give attention to, you give energy to. And whatever you give energy to will multiply. So the point is, though you study the law of attraction, it's not quite that simple. But the found, the principle, the, the, the fundamental principle is, is that whatever we give attention to, that's our focus. It's like entrainment. We begin to recognize, we begin to pay more attention to that. And we begin to attract the people, the places, the situations, the opportunities that help us to fulfill those goals where we're focusing our attention. So a lot of the work I'll do with you in the Silver Method is helping you to develop this skill set of focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want. So when you think of your goals, part of that meaningful intention is to focus on the positive. So just as a... um. Example, I mean, life vision would be key, you know, your, your future. But for right now, something simple. Maybe your health is very important to you. So how will you know you're healthy? What will you experience? What will your doctor say to you? What will you be able to do that gives you feedback you are healthy? And how does that, and what, and what will you be able to do? So you want to involve all of your mental senses, so to speak, in this quiet, relaxed state even just for this three to five minutes and visualize. I was just reading, I'm, I'm in the middle, of, almost finished a book written by James Doty. He's a famous neurosurgeon, quite an interesting story. It's less about neuroscience and more about his life and what led him to it. And some lessons he learned from somebody who gifted him with this. So the visualization doesn't take just because you're visualizing doesn't mean you don't have to plan. You don't. You still need a strategy. You still need a plan. You still need to take action. But sometimes we don't even know what the plan is or what action to take because we're not clear about what we want. So my friends, you want to ask yourself, what moves the needle for you? You want to have clarity of this, of, of, of purpose, of what it is that you want. So in this little second exercise for that, I'll ask you to pick something. Maybe it's maybe it's it's your business. Maybe it's your 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 your, your psychological well-being because you're grieving a loss, or maybe it's relationship, or maybe it's your weight. You want to tone up a little bit or take off a few pounds or something. So what's the outcome? So that's what I mean by meaningful intention, something that moves that would move the needle for you, something that would be a game changer, something that gets you up in the morning saying, yes, making progress. So I'll, gu I'll guide you. And I, this is a, 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 excuse me, a place to really savor, savor your mind wandering into daydreaming. What you want to work on, though, is if you start to go into worry mode or complaint mode, what are you going to say to yourself? Let me see. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Cancel, cancel. And then reframe it. Encourage yourself. So that's what I mean by directed, focused attention. And when you're in a quiet, relaxed state, all the research shows where 
What you're learning in Silver is with the original program teaching people how to reach alpha and theta brainwave states, which is very common, very natural when we're sleeping and even during the day, but to be able to sustain it. And it's the very brainwave state, it's the very level of consciousness that young children prior to puberty are in. And we all know young children learn at a much, 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 much more rapid rate than any adult. So if you're reinventing yourself, hey buddy, if you're reinventing yourself or you are pivoting and you've got to learn a lot of new tech or a lot of new uh, things to go with the, the new work or the hobby, whatever interest is, this is the key. It's a super learning state is what I'm referring to with that. So in this little second, again, eyelids closed, be relaxed, comfortable as you can, some deep breaths, some gratitude, and then I'll guide you to imagine and to visualize this goal coming to fruition, this you know meaningful goal for you. All right, fair enough. All right, so check it out. Please fasten your seatbelt. Excellent. Now allow your eyelids to close. And again, thank you, thank you for allowing me the honor to guide you. Now with your eyelids closed, allow a very slow, deep breath. Breathe in peace, hold it briefly, and as you exhale, breathe out your mouth, release any tensions. Another slow, deep breath. Hold it briefly. Exhale and release the tensions, if any. Allow another slow, deep breath. Take your time. How good it feels to progressively relax deeper and deeper. It is a wonderful, healthy state of mind and body. Now allow yourself to feel some gratitude. Appreciate anyone in your life, your happies in your life, or anything in your life. Maybe you like ice cream and you just had some delicious favorite ice cream, Ben and Jerry's or something like that. Doesn't matter. Or maybe if you live here in the Northeast, you're appreciating that warmer weather is on the way. We had lots of sun the past few days. I'll be quiet while you do this. Just feel it. Appreciate it. Excellent. Now, allow yourself to imagine and to visualize your best self emerging. So what's a goal, a meaningful intention you have? An intention for better health, a more fulfilling life, scaling up your business a bit, reaching more people with your music, reaching more people with your poetry, reaching more people in your coaching practice, your healing practice, in, or maybe improving, enriching your relationship. Just one. First one that comes to mind, trust your intuition. Now, how will you know that you are progressing, you are making steady progress? What do you see in your life happening as a result of you making steady, consistent progress? Perhaps you're hearing some feedback from people, comments, or reading some emails of thanks. What are you able to do? How will this benefit you and anyone you care about? What are the benefits for you? And how does this make you feel? Excellent. Now, 
now. Again, know that when you open your eyelids, you're going to be fully awake, alert, with superior concentration and understanding, and ready to continue. I'll count slowly from one to five. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, to count to five, may open your eyelids, be awake, be alert, feeling much, much better than before. Four, five, eyelids open, wide awake and alert, feeling fine and in excellent health, feeling better than before. Woohoo! Welcome back. Welcome back. Let me make sure everyone's back. That was like three minutes. Pretty good. Some of you look like if I were quiet any longer, you would have been really deep. Again, can you see this just too? When you do this throughout the day, it'll have a compounding effect. Learning how to do this is like one of the best investments of your time. You can take that to the bank, as they say. So remember, let's do a quick yawn, three yawns. Remember, stretch a little bit, everybody. One more. Come on, you can do it. Come on, thank you for playing with me. One more. All right. Feel better, right? Excellent. But we're covering so much ground. We could just stop now. This is do this every day. When you're in class with me, if you choose to come into the class or you come back to review, just in day number one, you're going to learn how to put your subconscious to work for you while you are sleeping. You're going to learn how to focus your dreams and use dreams to get insights, innovative ideas. I just got an email from a within the past year student, a uh, young teenager. He said, Ken, what do you think? Is this my intuition? I had a dream that I got a text from somebody to call and, and that the phone rang. I opened my eyes, but the phone didn't ring and there was no text. And then later this person called me. It's called a precognitive dream with respect to that. So you notice that you're going to have that. You'll learn a technique called the glass of water. It's a famous silver technique to help you make better decisions, to help you get to the root of what really moves the needle, working with your dreams. So many techniques. We're going to day three. You'll learn an advanced formula called holo viewing to take this visualization exercise game changer to help you clarify strategies, plans of action. I mean, can you see how important this is and how valuable these skills can be? However you do it, you want to learn these skills. So, okay, this is all well and good, but you know, what if I just don't believe in myself and, you know, it's easy for you, Ken. I think I'm rather slow, by the way. I went through the class and my first year, I reviewed 12 times. Every month, I was with Bill Zarek in Brooklyn in the class. And... Maybe I'm not really that slow, I hope not, but I was just so immersed in it. It's also how I got involved in it. I was becoming an instructor and I was doing presentation, but I loved it, answering questions for people and working with them. But I can tell you truly, every time I went, I got a little more. Every time I teach a class, hundreds of classes later, decades later, I get deeper insights. That's what self-awareness is about, getting deeper. And we live in a world today where marketing is king and queen, and we're all being seduced to the promise of, you know, cutting edge, new, nothing's new, and the new shiny object. The key is integrating it, knowing what you want and integrating it and implementing it. And then I can tell you, by the way, it is an art form in the silver method. Instructors are encouraged. And I know one thing, if you decide to work with me, you get me with this, and I offer a ton of support during the training after the training, and it doesn't stop there, to make sure that you integrate these principles and work with it. So the third step would be confidence, self-confidence. It's a big stumbling block for people, isn't it? Would you agree? It's a stumbling block for people. If people feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. So many people, excuse me, are quite expert in what they do in their trade, in their profession. And the one thing holding them back is the fear of failure. It's very common for, for, for athletes, very common for professional entertainers to experience performance anxiety. Frankly, it never goes away. Raise the bar, be self-aware, raise your, become conscious of that, and you can turn it into creative unrest. Even today, I was rather pensive today. I said to my wife, it never goes old. 
I've given this presentation before. I've worked this. You know, I've been in front of people so many times because it shows that you care, my friends. So what we're working toward is having a confidence in ourselves that somehow, some way we can figure it out. And when you make the investment in yourself and you have a growth mindset and you study and you read and you ask for help and you maybe hire a coach or you take a training, that's how you figure it out. It's not going to happen magically because you're wishfully thinking, you know, this is way beyond some of the myths of the earlier versions of the law of attraction. You do have to have a plan. You do need to do the work. It's not a quick fix. I wish it were. I really do. It's not. <clears throat> so how in the world can you build some confidence? This is a real game changer in, in, in state. So much of our beliefs. So what I am talking about is limiting beliefs. Agreed? It's been overplayed, overused, I think, that expression. You and I are the product of all of the conditioning. Anything that we've learned, we can unlearn. From our earliest beginnings as infants, through childhood, through adolescence, through adulthood, to today, the people we hang out with, the books we read, the things we do, all shape our beliefs. Agreed? And I'm not going to use names, but in the world, whether it be politicians or the media, they know if you hear something often enough, eventually you begin to believe it. And listen, in certain news broadcasts, you hear the very same wording repeated, but from 10 different people. That's called conditioning, my friends. So when you raise your awareness to that, you can see through things with that. So this part of having that confidence and believing ourselves, but there's more you know, in building up. Just as a quick example, I haven't used this in a while, but I think it might serve you. It's very common knowledge that any behavior of an animal, positive or negative, is really has more to do with the owner. And anybody who does um, quote unquote dog training, horse training, you're really training the owner to know how to respond and work with them. And those of you, many of you know what I'm talking about here. It's really on us as the as as the 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 owners with that. So as an example, um, I believe they're still there. Ringling Brothers Barn and Bailey Circus in Sarasota. They had the big training grounds, and there's this old story floating around for a long time that people, family, were walking through, and they came upon the elephants. And you know they're really majestic creatures, and they're very intelligent, and they have great memories, and they are mammals. But what was odd, the youngster looked and said, "Hey, Daddy." It looked like somebody made a mistake. What the youngster had observed was the adult elephant, huge, bigger than this room, wouldn't fit in this room, had a little rope around its leg tied to a little, looked like a doorstop, tap, tap into the ground. But the baby, so small by comparison, had a big chain wrapped around its leg, tied, they later found out, to a stake drilled into the ground like some eight feet or more. And the adult was like, But the baby was what? Pulling and tugging and pulling and tugging and pulling and tugging and pulling, right? And tugging. They made it so difficult, nearly impossible for it to get loose because that was its instinct. It's called conditioning that eventually what? It stopped. When they get to that point, you could just put a little string around them like the adult and they're in place. It's conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. So what chains are holding you back? What have you been told by your parents, your coach, by people? Can't tell you how many people told me when I said I was going to become an instructor. My family, they love me. They really have my back. I come from a very, very strong family background, and I have that going now with my own family, your children, and so on. But they say, oh, you can never do it. You're too impatient. I had anger issues. I had a bit of a speech impediment. They couldn't picture that. They said, what do you know about that? Because they didn't want me to get hurt. They didn't want me to be disappointed. So it's not about blaming. I'm not blaming anyone. We all have these the conditioning. And we've been there's been a battle going on in science, in medical science, that is changing. There's a whole new field called energy medicine. And it's revolutionizing the way we look at that, and epigenetics and the way we're looking at how the environment plays a role. So anything that we've 
learned, we can unlearn when you have the skill set and you have the tools. And that's what I'm teaching you here now. While in this quiet, relaxed, focused state of awareness, you can unlearn anything. And with the right training, it makes it a whole lot easier. So here's a way you can start building some confidence. We'll do an exercise. And just think for a second here. Um, what you want to do is avoid self-doubt. Agreed? And the big what ifs. Write this down. What if? What if I succeed? What if I prosper? What if I thrive? What if I have a happy, healthy, fulfilling life? What if I have a wonderful relationship? What if I attract you know, a great friend into my life? Instead of the other what ifs that people run through. And you can do that meditation. In fact, in a quiet, low, relaxed state, you can do, what is it? What do I want? What do I want? And ask yourself that. We're not going to do it tonight because you don't want to rush it. You want to, when you're not in a rush time, just to sit back and think, what do I want? What's important to me? Then when you open your eyes, you write it down. And you play this game, what if? What if my life, something positive. It's another takeaway for you. But this one right here is even maybe more important. Think for a moment. If you're concerned about your health, let's go back to the health. Can you remember a time in the not too distant past when you had better health? Yes or no? Yeah, of course. Can you remember a time when in your relationship, your current relationship, if it's a significant other, when things were rosier, more um, uh, harmonious? Sure, yes. Doesn't matter, even if it was 40 years ago or four days ago. How about in your business? Can you remember a time when you felt more fulfilled in the work you do and things, there was more of a flow? How about in your practice? Whatever that practice may be. Or maybe you like to play golf or tennis. Can you remember a time when it seemed like, man, you hit all your marks? I don't see you nodding. Are you yes or no? If you're yet, the answer should be yes, I hope. If not, oh God, we got a lot of work to do for you. <laughs> I'm looking, seeing, I see, but thank you for laughing with me. This is kind of funny, isn't it? So here's the, here's the point. It's a simple point and very profound. It's evidence, fact. Nobody can take that away from you. Nobody. It can be the most brilliant scientist on this planet. It can be the biggest skeptic. It can be the biggest genius, the biggest multi-billionaire, not that that's so important. I know what I know because I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people for 50 something years. They call me now the best of the best working with that, but that's not important. It's you and all these people who have time after time reported, yes, anecdotally, the evidence. So I know when people go through and do the four, and now even neuroscience is that in the four days of the guided meditation in the silver class, you will experience a centering effect, a balancing effect, your health will improve, you'll get, your business will improve, you'll be luckier, your intuition will come alive. You can't replace that. So I'm asking you in your own way, any area that's important to you, look for the evidence. It's not too far back, but if you have to go 20 years ago, it's okay. Because that's the truth. You're not wishing. So let's do that real quick. It's called, we call it in day number two, we do this now of the immersion of life and intuition system, creating this resource state of confidence, evidence. And when we're in that state, it gets us out of fear mode, it gets us out of scarcity consciousness, and it creates a coherent pattern in our heart, our brain, and we're more likely to attract that which will help us reach that. So let's do another quick one. Again, your eyelids closed. Nice and easy, allow your eyelids to close. Three deep breaths. Allow a slow deep breath, nice and easy. Inhaling, breathing in peace. Exhaling, or you can do your three to one method. Silver people, releasing the tensions. Allow another slow, deep breath. Take your time. Exhaling out your mouth. One more for now, slow, deep breath. How good it feels to progressively relax deeper and deeper. Now, feel some gratitude. Allow yourself to feel gratitude. It could be the same thing you've been thinking of. Someone or something in your life, you're so happy is in your life. I'm really appreciating. I've been able to not, I didn't have to bundle up the past few days going for my walk. 
not quite short weather yet, but not all bundled up and having the sun shining on my face. Oh, it was wonderful. Thank you. What about you? Feel it. Now, as you explore your meaningful intention, your goal, your aspiration, think of a time when you were at your best. So it doesn't matter, relationships, your health, your business, your career, your hobbies. Think of a time when you're at your best. Be as specific as you can. Was it an event? Was it working with a client? Was it in a relationship? What were the circumstances? What was your posture? How were you standing? How were you talking? How were you interacting? What were you feeling? So replay it as if you're rewinding a video of your life and re-experience it. And then tell yourself, if I've done it before, I can do it again. Anytime you are going into a new situation and you feel challenged, take a few brief moments like this to relive, to review in a quiet, relaxed, focused state, a past bit of evidence of when you did make progress, when you were effective in any area, whether it relates to the new task or not. And you'll find you'll bring the same level of confidence. Excellent. Now again, at the count of five, may open your eyelids, be awake, be alert, feeling Fantastic. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, may open your eyelids, be awake, be alert, feeling much, much better than before. Four, five, eyelids open, wide awake and alert, feeling better than before. Welcome back. Okay, let's do the yawning. Everybody, come on, stretch. Helps you wake up. <sighs> come on, guys. You can do it. Let me just take a look at how everybody's doing. Oh, wow, look at you guys. Yeah. It only takes three. Yeah. Now, the next time you're at a business meeting or having a an intimate conversation, I wouldn't start yawning because they're going to take it the wrong way unless they were here and they know what you're doing for that. But it's a way you can just go off privately somewhere. It's a very proven strategy. Again, I wish I had more time with you, but these are the kinds of things that we do in our graduate work together. One of the things, by the way, for support, integration is so important. And too often people go through beautiful programs, wonderful, they're inspired. And then Monday, nothing changes. Or a week later, maybe a month later, they slip back into the old patterns. So my friends, as powerful as the silver method is, I think it's the greatest thing since ice cream. Repetition is necessary. So you have an immersion of knowledge. Repetition is what rewires the brain, increases new neural patterns. Implementation, using it, and that leads to mastery. So the two is right, there's four cornerstones needed. Immersion of the knowledge, the experience, the training, repetition, practice, implementation, using it in your life, and that leads for, to mastery with that. So we offer, I offer you a ton of support, by the way, that even you reviewers and you come back in the class, it's really for the new people, the first time students. But as you know, I limit the group to 29 people. So you have my undivided attention. You're not a face lost in the crowd. Everybody's on my screen. So I can watch you and interact and take your questions. Number one, every day I send you an email giving you a preview, which helps the learning experience. But then after, I've now been organizing. I set a goal. I wanted to have every day of the week a graduate meeting. So now with Zoom and, and WhatsApp and things like that, we've got them seven days a week. I've got volunteer group leaders, silver graduates, and it's only for our community, for Ken's community. It's exclusive because I don't want to open up to the public for sure. People who know the skills, who practice them, and they want to share successes. Can, it's a way to connect in the community. It's a way to be a part of the community, that you're never alone. And now some days of the week, we have two groups meeting. 
Is that cool or what? And I'm mean, not. And I'm still going to continue getting them out there. This is one of the bonuses you get when you choose to work with me when you work in the class with them. Plus, I do a reunion every time I do a class. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, complimentary, with me making sure you understand what to do. And then we do a whole group coaching experience. So it's really up to you. You can take this as far as you want. What I want you to know is if you decide to do this, whether you're coming back to review or you're a new student, you got me and you've got a whole community of people supporting you. Number four, fourth and final skill, and maybe the most important. We may go a couple of minutes late. I'm notorious for that. In the class, I'm pretty good with that, but it's just there's just so much I don't want to do. And I have to say, having this limited time frame, I feel very constrained because I'm used to having four full days, nine to seven, to do this. So I haven't even shared a fraction of what you'll learn in the class and the skills, 15 skills, techniques. The silver method is step-by-step. Step. And the fourth one, step-by-step step to awaken, develop, and learn to trust your intuition from experience. In the truest sense of the word, this is a program about learning to trust your intuition. And we use what's called deliberate practice. Isn't that cool? I never in studying peak performance that's what they call it where you get immediate feedback it's the best way to learn so all during the class and especially on day three and all during it but day three and day four in particular you play all sorts of games of intuition with me and you'll do things that you never thought you could do and there'll be times when nah, you won't be so impressed and there'll be times when you say oh my god i can't believe i did that where you'll knock your socks off and with a little more practice but you'll have at least 10 to 13 experiences where you get immediate feedback that helps you to learn to make distinctions of what the difference is that made the difference when you're way off. I won't call it a failure as long as you learn a lesson, it's not. And when you're on, that's the surest way to trust your intuition because it's a slippery slope. There's so many distortions. There's wishful thinking, people going gambling. I grew up with gamblers, as you know my story. It's horrible. I'm not even going to go into it. Time doesn't allow, but I learned so much from these streetwise people, and I learned what not to do. Wishful thinking. Um, fear. What if? What if? Because we need to be in a centered, quiet, relaxed state with that. So if we keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to get the same old, same old. So if you look at your business, your relationships, your health, your well-being, if you keep doing what you've been doing all your life, you're going to keep perpetuating. Now, if you're happy with that and you're fulfilled, fantastic. If not, then you need to learn what? A new skill set and begin to implement that, which is what we're working with here. So this, trust your intuition, some of the greatest inventions, some of the greatest innovations in medical science, in in business and in industry in the tech world and the arts have been people guided by their heart being guided by their intuition i can even something is going back the the white brother let me get a sip of water please by the way those of you who know me this is one of my triggers to keep joyful those all my grandchildren although now they're a bit older and i get a new one i just had dinner with one of the three who lives locally um, with that. So I ask you, think for a moment, when you've had an intuitive insight that served you, and maybe you didn't listen, and then you say, gee, I knew better. I wish I had listened. Can you remember something like that? And then again, something that you thought was intuition, but you were way off. You want to reflect and contrast them. What's the difference that made the difference? It's not a quick fix again. It really is that simple. It's not always easy, but with enough practice. And all during the class, and it doesn't stop there, this is what I urge, and I want the volunteer graduate leaders to be practicing games with the intuition to fine tune that because you can have innovations, you can have breakthroughs in science and things. So that's part of it. Go back to the mind wandering. Have you ever noticed that you work on something, and sometimes the more you work on it, oh, you feel like you're stuck in nothing, right? But then you let go, you go take a shower. <laughs> Some of the greatest ideas have come to people when they're in the shower. 
or going for a walk because you what? Took off the pressure. Or walking in nature, you're in a relaxed state. So you've got to know what your intention is. Remember, first foundation is, this is how we create a path, if you will, to the higher self. This is how we prepare, because we want to have intuition that's conscious. We want to be consciously competent. We want to know what turns it on, what turns it off, what are the distinctions? And that takes practice, and that's a skill set, and it can be trained. And that's, by the way, what the mission is of the Silver Method. In 1953, Mr. Silver had a big shift in his research when the children began to anticipate what he was going to say to them before they before he even asked with that so the foundation is manage your energy be, be able to turn on at will a calm relaxed focused state to be able to yes acknowledge the stressors acknowledge the challenges the difficulty it's there you don't want to hide it but not let it get the best of you so to take command of your life to take back your future it's an inside game. It ain't going to happen from outside. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the gizmos and gadgets. And so many people have that and they say, is that it? <laughs> is there anything more? The second step, you got to know what it is you want and have clarity of purpose and have a sense that this is important to me. This is something I value. Because when you have that connection, then there's no stopping you. Then you want to have the confidence that somehow, some way I'll figure this out by studying evidence to support that, yes, I've worked things out. And then you want to be open. It's a whole different skill set. Here, we're governed in a waking state by laws of logic and reasoning, which are very important. Critical thinking, very important. But the whole purpose of meditation, the whole purpose of a relaxed, focused state is to quiet the logic and the reasoning and the critical thinking and to consciously become aware of a subjective state what they call the field, what they call the poss quantum possibilities, where ideas, innovations, and breakthroughs. Read the life and times of famous people in any area, and you'll hear them referencing, whether they use the same terminology or not, the state came to them while they were dreaming, a quiet, relaxed state. So one of the exercises we do is, um, I should tell you what, I play a game that I, that I do People sit with each other. But one we do that Mr. Silver developed is we call caseworking, where you sit down with the partner. So let's say if Slobodin and I were doing this together, he brings to the session some cases. We call them cases, people he knows that need some help. He knows about them. I don't. The idea is for me to use my silver techniques to tune in and come up intuitively to figure it out. And then, of course, we practice what we call absent healing, distant remote healing to help. And it's a knock your socks off uh, with this. And if you've never done anything like that, and even if you have, there's always that little bit of performance anxiety. It's a tr most powerful way to change a limiting belief because you leave with unquestionable proof. So I remind you. And the best part is uh, for you newbies interested, I'd be honored to have you in the class with me. And yes, there's a guarantee, but frankly, I don't believe in these unconditional, which I think are BS guarantees for people who play the numbers game. I don't. It's conditional. You attend the whole training from the very beginning. You don't miss anything. You participate fully, all the meditations. And when we're done, if for any reason it's not for you, you're not happy, hey, at least you gave it a shot. By the way, I know that when people do the work and they participate, they're going to get results and as you'll see so find out for yourself with that so let's do another quick little exercise let's just take two minutes is important so i'm going to actually you close your eyelids again and i did two with the sound one without it let's do it again with the sound but very very soft okay so this is important allow your eyelids to close nice and easy <clears throat> allow a slow deep breath And while exhaling, just allow your body and mind to relax and center. Allow another slow, deep breath. And while exhaling, center yourself. How good it feels to progressively relax deeper and deeper. And one more for now, slow, deep breath. <clears throat> you 
You may now allow yourself a few moments to feel some gratitude, some appreciation, or relive a moment of excellence, a time when you were at your best. You have the evidence in your life that in the past you were challenged and you worked it out. Feel grateful for it. And now, as you think about your intuition, can you remember a time when clearly you were way off, you thought you were being intuitive and it was maybe fear or wishful thinking or whatever, just you were off. And can you remember, do remember, a time when you were accurate? You were spot on. You don't know how or why, but somehow, some way, you knew. You had advanced warning, advanced sensing. And what's the difference that made the difference between these two contrasting circumstances? Was it a feeling for you? Was it a vision? Was it an auditory response, something you heard? And remember, practice, practice, practice will make perfect. Once again, in a moment, I'll count to five. Close a slight sound with my fingers. And at that moment, you'll open your eyelids, be awake, be alert, feeling fantastic, feeling much, much better than before. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, may open your eyelids, be awake, be alert, feeling fantastic. Four, five, eyelids open, wide awake and alert. Feeling excellent. Welcome back. Woohoo! Let me see these beautiful faces. Let me have a smile, please. <laughs> and by the way, you will sleep better than you have in a long time tonight. And maybe even have better quality of dreams. So remember the yawning? So again, stretch a little bit. <sighs> One more. <sighs> Oh, how exciting, Ken. <sighs> Excellent. Good job. You guys rock. You rock. You know, I believe in you. You got this. By the fact that you're here and you're still here says a lot about you and your commitment to you. I am so appreciative that you love yourself enough to take the time to learn something more, to review, to reinforce. It really, it's what it, what it takes is have that growth mindset. There's always something something to learn with respect to that. So I have a couple of quick announcements for you with that is in April, I am doing one more virtual immersion. I'm doing it over two weekends, but during the week, I'll be working with the group and giving them tasks and assignments. So it'll be <clears throat> uh, almost like eight, nine days of an immersion for them in class together. And then after that, heads up, the fee will be going up. And then in August, not August, excuse me, July, July, middle of July, I will be testing the waters and doing an in-person here, live in Connecticut, in Farmington. So I've got the place booked. It's official. Uh, you want in. It, and the April one is more than almost, almost or half full already with this. People have been, been registering before I even started promoting with that. So if you are interested and you'd like to be there, then I recommend Silver Method of Connecticut, silvermethodct.com. That's my website. Go on the schedule page, scroll down. There's tons of great information. There's videos. Go on the blog page. There's all sorts of great training there. Complimentary for you. But on the schedule page, find where the virtual is. And there's another button that I'll click on. And there's a separate page to register. All I ask is because of the nature of this, I want you to get full value. I want you to really greatest thing since ice cream for you. So I am only accepting reservations from reviewers and new people alike 
who can and will commit to all four days from beginning to end. There's no makeups, there's no, uh, what do you call them, replays, there's no recording, it's me and you in an intimate setting, me coaching you every step of the way. That's huge, guys. So your questions are answered. If you've been doing any home studies or any of this 12 hours of pre-recorded videos, there's a version of the Silver Method that's at best an introduction to Silver. It's pretty good. But who do you ask questions? And you know what that's like. If you have a question and it's not answered, you give up. You get frustrated. I, I'm answering questions as much as I can on Facebook and Instagram from people with that. So it's me, not an assistant, but me guiding you. No recordings. Everything is live working. And me guiding you through the exercises too and the practicing. If you go on this page for the virtual, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's four full days. Second, you get two manuals. I just want you to know some of the added value bonuses that you'll find. You get two complete manuals. Each one's mm, almost 100 pages each. Anything and everything that's important is written down so you don't need to take notes and we mail that to you. You're going to get it in the in mail for that. I just got a quick warning. I didn't plug in. Hold on. <laughs> Power. Lifetime review privilege. You can come back. You want to take it. Those of you reviewing, if you have not been back to review, I think you're missing the boat, frankly, because you're a different person. You're more open. You know that it works. Now the question is, how can I make it work better? You're going to get 30-minute coach with me, one-on-one, -on -one, after the fact, 90 minutes of group coaching with your class and only your class so that we can share work with that. Then they review and expansion downloads. One's a video, they're over an hour each. One's an MP3 of me going through the steps, what you learned in the class, how to apply it. You'll be eligible to be part of our community. These daily, literally daily graduate groups that these, bless these people, some of them are on the call, that are holding for you to guarantee and you get me with it. And there's so much more you know, with this. So. It'd be great. I love doing this and I would look forward. I'd be so honored to work with you in the class and see you more to come. Also, we're working on some graduate programs. I'm kind of testing the waters within person as long as people, you know, one thing for people is I've been getting a lot of requests. So now the question is, those who are requesting, will they actually take action <laughs> and be there? You guys in Chicagoland will be there next. I love going, you know, where we do the classes there. But first step is to Check it out here. And then, um, and I'll probably still do the virtuals, but I'll do a combination of, of, of the uh, two. So the benefit of the virtual is you don't have to travel, you don't have to fly, and it's almost as impactful as the in-person. I have to say I'm thrilled with this, and I'll do everything I can to make sure. So guys, you guys rock. I believe in you. I hope you believe in yourself and recognize you're far more than what you give yourself credit for. You got this as long as you take the time, do your homework, do the practice a few times a day. Please do these exercises, and uh, I would love to hear from you. So until the next time, God bless. You were great. Thank you so much. You know, and if you want, I'm going to stop the recording, and we'll do some Q&A. If somebody has cute questions, let me just stop, and I'll say good night, then to respect your privacy. Eh, how do you do it? <laughs>